Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm going to start with a um, very brief, let's call it a behind the scenes video as um, really uh, sort of show what's going on around me. Um, you should try and keep it a little bit tidy in here, but as you can see um, behind me there, my bench area, um, I have Atari 800 um, in pieces out on the desk. So I thought I'd talk today about so how far I've got on my attempted uh, repair stroke restoration of this machine. Limited progress, shall we say. Uh, we'll talk in a little bit more detail shortly, but uh, this is going to be an ongoing project. And uh, as I've mentioned, I'm not entirely sure if I'll be successful or whether this will uh, have to go to um, more expert eyes to uh, take a closer look at this. But um, I'll tell you how I've been getting along. I've ruled some things out potentially. Uh, that's about as far as you can say. Also, I thought I would speak a little bit about um, other plans I've got for the channel. Some people might not be interested in looking at all this hardware stuff. So um, I'll go into a little detail about um, a silly little project that I've been working on. And we will get uh, at least a little bit of gameplay in. And um, I won't tell you what that gameplay will be because I don't know. All will become clear. Okay, so um, yeah, I was up until city o'clock last night, something that I can't do very much at my age now that I'm 40-something, I won't say. This is what happens. Um, I start tinkering and have to get lots of things out. Uh, things get in a little bit of a mess, uh, so one of my first jobs today is just clear down a little bit. Uh, but I need to make this video now because there is a big risk that I'll forget some of the things that I've actually done if I don't actually record them. So this is um, kind of for my benefit as well as yours, but um, I hope some people find this interesting. So I'll get into it. Let's go. I'll tell you what's been going on. Hope you enjoy. Okay, so you may remember this is the Atari 800 just after I unboxed it. I'm going to cut quickly to uh, when I put this on the desk the other day just to recall the initial state of the machine. Okay, so here's our Atari 800. We've used the alternate power supply here. Um, I did kind of just wonder whether that would make a difference, whether the uh, incorrect power supply was the sole issue, but I don't think that is actually the case. If I just show you here, so I'm not going straight into a monitor or a TV at the moment. Um, we have the uh, cable going actually into my video capture. So um, yeah, kind of just a quick and dirty way of showing you here. Um, this is um, OBS Studio on the screen that I capture with. And uh, at the moment there's nothing, but it is tuned to the capture card. If I just flip the power button here. That's interesting. We'll turn it off again. Ah, oh, sorry, the power cable does need to be in. I'll plug the power cable back in. Okay, we're just going to flip the power button here. So you saw that flash. That's definitely receiving power, uh, but in black screen, as described in uh, the description of the item from eBay. Um, but if I just go back down to the machine, you'll see we do have a power LED lit up there. So yeah that's working but um nothing on the screen so we shall investigate a little further so before we go any further uh full detail here i did just uh, scare myself a little bit because um, i thought hey you know uh, let's try it with a cartridge in and this came with a basic cartridge this is actually basic rev a i've run the appropriate print peak and a number i can't remember off the top of my head but there's a command to check the basic version and i've checked that it's definitely rev a so it's the old version which has bugs um but it is appropriate for the um age and time this came out this would have came with the machine so it was good that was complete and um, i just wondered yeah you know would it boot with it I didn't think it would matter, but let's give it a try. Um, turned it on and um, hey, no LED. But now I've just realized exactly the reason for that is uh, that there detects whether the door is closed. And I, I had actually heard that before, but I'd totally forgotten. So with that closed and turned on, it's a switch feeling for it with my right hand. Again, uh, we get that light, but we get nothing there whatsoever. So um, to be continued. Next part of this, we'll notice I've just removed the uh, two screws and washers in these two positions here. So I'm um, doing this live first time. That means we can open this up a bit further. Oh, this, this just lifts straight off and we can have a look at some of the ICs that we have here. Um, so yeah, 
the seller had already let me know this was fully populated but these had no um, identifying marks on them they're not cased so we'll have to take them out and have a look see what they are check you know can we run the machine with less of these as a test failing that going further we'll have to uh, delve deeper into the machine and um, yeah check everything is sort of complete connected properly clean it all out before we uh, do any further diagnostics we had already removed some components here we have there was a speaker inside the case um, there is a small retainer which was holding all the cards in that's they're waving in the breeze at the moment but we won't worry about that so those were the retaining screws from this section silver ones with washers and then we've got these screws that have come out the back screws from there 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 and there have been removed so we'll turn it back or sideways for a moment let's just tease the case apart it comes from the back first a little bit I believe Seemed to be a bit easier before, now that I've kind of placed it back on just to start this video it's appearing a little bit uh, more difficult to get up. Let's just lift that, maybe we should take this off. Let's remove that piece and turning it over, let's just get our fingers under there. Okay, yes that's it, so the uh, base piece comes off first, I'm forgetting how that came apart. What is next? So it's certainly all still attached to the top part of the case. Quite seriously, is there anything we can visually see at this stage? I'm thinking not, we've got a lot of screws to undo here. We really need to see what's going on and hope we can boot the machine when we get to the next stage. So, let's find a suitable screwdriver. Is this going to be okay? Yes, that's fine. They're loose. They're not too bad at all. So, I believe this is a lot more modular than the XL series. So, you know, I'm just waiting for it to all to fall apart when I open it. I'm being strategic because I'm not as familiar with getting inside these beasties. Okay, there's still a lot of tension there. So that, those there, oh, that's strange, there's, that's interesting, that one seems missing. Has somebody been in here before? I see missing screws here. I'm not entirely, sh yeah, not really happy about that if somebody has been. So that's not, obviously not something the seller definitely be aware of but you know you might have some idea of the history of this uh, someone's been tinkering about already to try and solve a fault and realized it's you know there's a reason and then they've sold it as that state that's a bit different from you know just stating this is how I found it okay so I can see there we have ribbon cables so I'm going to place it, how am I going to place it now, this way round, and just see if we can lift and look at that from the other side, yep, perfect. This is a good start, I think we might do a visual inspection at this stage before taking anything else apart. Uh, so I want to just prop that, make sure that stays upright. Okay, what can we see? So there wasn't really much to see at this point. Uh, no obvious components that looked like they'd blown. So having a bit of a visual inspection here. It's nice to see a smoking gun straight away. You know, something that's come loose that you can just push back in. But yeah, I wasn't so lucky. So all we've really learned at this stage is uh, how the machine's put together. So I'm focusing there on the uh, power board. And you see I've turned to alcohol straight away. Um, isopropanol that is. So we're starting to clean the board up. Just so we can get any of the grime off. And hopefully we might spot if anything is shorting and then after a clean um, using an air duster there just to sort of blow everything out 
both so you know i can see past the grime and also you never know there might be a bit of debris in there somewhere which is uh, causing a short which could be uh, potentially part of a problem okay so i proceed at this stage to uh, remove further screws which are retaining the two main boards together uh, that is the power board on the left and the uh, main board in the middle that you can see the uh, joystick ports protruding from and um, underneath that big uh, metal heat sink uh, you've got the cartridge ports and um, where the IC is going. So we've turned over here and um, we're just checking uh, there's a few more screws left there on the back of this shielding. Generally it's good to get all the shielding out the way so you can get at the boards. At this stage I realize it's pretty sensible to remove the expansion cards before going any further. Um, and then we're thinking everything's clear, we're removing the connector there between the two boards and yep, that comes away. So that gives us greater scope to uh, look at all sides of the board, do things like check continuity all around the circuit, buzzing it out with a multimeter um, and cleaning everything, Yeah, looking for any uh, obvious defects. So great, we've got that shielding out the way there. And you can see behind there, there is an additional board which doesn't protrude from the accessible shot slots and uh, this ultimately is your CPU board. Um, and that is the board there. Uh, just recording that so we can check the revision. And um, yep, that's what it looks like. Not quite holding it center on camera. Now that dial there is interesting. We'll mention that later. Okay, so uh, here we've got some shots of um, everything taken apart. We've got the big bit of shielding there. We've got the uh, main board in the middle. We've got the boards on the right that have come out. And we've got the power board on the left. And, of course, the uh, keyboard forward uh, sort of behind there. Um, that's the uh, CPU board that's come out, the one that was hiding there. So I'm proceeding to get the multimeter out and starting to test continuity all around this board and, uh, believe me, various other boards uh, Yeah, really dull. Um, everywhere I could trace with my eyes, I was following and buzzing out and just seeing if uh, there are any dead traces. Uh, I'm not sure how methodical I was, did my best, but uh, yeah, didn't really find anything that seemed out of place. So here we go. I'm starting to put everything back together now with a view to uh, doing... Uh, a power on test with the machine disassembled. So I'm looking there at a switch, like micro switch type thing. This is where the case um, goes and we're looking at a high tech solution here to keep that pushed down um, because we'll be running without the full case. Uh, so although we might at times have the keyboard section on above it um, with the board loose, I don't think that's really gonna push down um, there's no way we can do that any other way so that's what we're doing for now um, so we've got the keyboard connected in there and I'm just sort of positioning it so it rests and doesn't cause any issues so for power supply uh, if you remember the original power supply was the wrong one it was for an Atari printer um, this is one that's been sourced I'm not taking any chances labeled this up um, Atari 800 and yes do not want to plug that into any other equipment that's DC because that might release the magic smoke we already know that um, doesn't really make any difference to the fault but at least we're using the right power now here I've just disconnected briefly and I'm illustrating how the two main boards connect uh, as I thought I spotted a bit of debris in there um, and it's in a loose connection so we're just going to blow that out and hoping we're good to go we put that back together looking to get this thing powered up again however this is where I noticed something in all the jiggling about we had a problem see these are bits of wire from 1979 and now if you can see there, um, we will in a minute, we realize that we've actually managed to pull one of these wires off the board inadvertently. So at the moment it's the green wire that's come off. So we have a little bit of repair work to do 
and uh, we get the soldering kit out. Now I was wondering whether, you know, did we not spot that was loose before? Could this actually be the fault that we've been looking for? Or, you know, if it was on the board it was a dry solder joint before it finally came off. So here we go, we're getting ready, bearing that piece of wire. Um, but yes, in working with this, you can see that I think the problem begins to get worse because as I start manipulating more and more wires come off so here we go we're gonna put them all back on properly a bit of clearing up to do underneath the board where those old bits of wire come through using a bit of braid and there we go we'll solder this connection back on off camera I did double check that we're putting them on the right way round because um, yeah, clearly wasn't really paying much attention when they first came off. So just flowing an extra bit of solder there, just make sure they're good connections. I buzzed that all out and it was working. So this is ultimately our test harness. Um, all the case and shielding gone. Uh, everything is connected back up, uh, ready for power on test so we can continue to troubleshoot. And I had it connected up to my capture card also did some work on the screen and I must say um, we're not seeing any different results I reseated several of the chips um, at times I was getting no output at all on the screen um, at other times I was getting uh, some strange effects I was finding that if I connect to uh, my capture card I was able to see things a lot more clearly because um, at many times the TV I was using was not detecting a signal when there was just a bad signal coming through. So the initial effect that I was seeing before was just a black screen. Um, interestingly I found a few things um, from reseating several of the uh, chips on both the main board also on the uh, CPU card at one point I had a yellow screen wasn't able to capture that on video but I do have a photo of it here uh, the other thing I found was that the potentiometer on the CPU card um, which I believe is there to uh, for color correction that is actually affecting uh, the picture I was able to get some uh, rather colorful outputs coming through so that may be a clue to what parts of the circuitry are and are not working clearly there is a video signal that is progressing there but you know what is in that video signal is obviously garbage so you know does that mean we've got a problem with the um, graphics chip CTIA chip do we have a more fundamental problem with a processor let's hope there's nothing wrong with any of the chips uh, what has also occurred to me is you know should I just go ahead and replace things like capacitors on this board um, you know I have recapped various other machines normally that's just improved things where there's been um, sort of poor quality output um, just by putting better caps on uh, things have got better in stuff like the 2600 and the uh, 800 XL I'm wondering if this case do we have any you know completely dead components and quite cheaply I can uh, recap this board so uh, with time I have available with other commitments and um, that's really my next step I've ordered the capacitors and um, we'll come back to this in the very near future um, also researching a lot on the internet anyone has any suggestions any Atari enthusiasts a little bit more expert than me please please do pipe up on the comments I'd love to hear from you I'm willing to try anything I haven't tried already on this machine I'm hoping with my own research I can work out where to focus if I need to spend anything on replacement components because I don't have any spares for an Atari 800 um, I want to focus in the right areas so okay that's the current state of affairs with my eBay Atari 800okay something I briefly wanted to talk about is that I was uh, looking at a way to discover hidden Atari gems uh, but to go through all the different titles that have been released over the years and have been painstakingly archived by a select few um, you know I needed a way to you know create a random process to give me a game to try with no bias at all if I just randomly go through the directories myself 
you know, who knows what I'm going to land upon just because I'm going to spot things and my own biases are going to take over. So um, I decided, why don't I just, you know, write a script to give me a file name um, from the various Atari disk images that I have on my PC. And it kind of built from there. Um, I ended up playing around in Python. Um, haven't really done much work in Python, although, you know, I do work in technology. Um, I'm not a developer, but, you know, I do like to uh, play with things that are new to me. Um, and it just spiraled from there. So um, let me just move this onto the screen. This is the prototype of the TJ Games Random Game Generator. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, we're going to select a batch of games uh, and load it from the archive. So I click start there and hopefully a little progress bar. So there is a selection of games has just been randomly put in a pool. Um, I'm then going to press another button which is going to spin those around and randomly give us a game. So let's go. So what's this? Um, it's a demo. Okay, that's one flaw in this plan because it's going across a whole archive. So the rule we're going to apply here, unless I do this in code in the future, is if it's a demo, we ignore it. So click again, searching through that um, batch that was randomly generated in the first instance. Uh, it seems to have frozen there, but I think it's still working. Um, and this is not going well at all because it's given me disk four or something. So let's hope this is a good batch and there is disk one of a game or a single disk game in this selection. Ooh, what have we got there? Ah, oh, this is always the way. Right. There'll be some editing going on here, but this is where um, I noticed that my window drawer is a little bit wrong and uh, I have to go there and look for a restart button. Uh, then we will select a bigger batch. Let's go for 30 files. It's going to randomly put in a pot for us. Um, <laughs> oh yes, there's the start button. Yeah. I have some bugs to work through in my code. Okay. They've all been put in the pot. Spin them around. Okay, there's, I have no idea what this is. So the next thing we're going to do is click this button that I've made here that says Mount in Respect QT. And it's appeared on the wrong window. But if I pull that in there, you'll see that the randomly selected game is already mounted. I have my SIO to USB adapter plugged in. So all I have to do manually is reach over and turn on my Atari holding down the option key. Have to do something about that. And it's been pernickety actually, it seems to take two boots at the moment. I don't know why. There we go, that's better. And there's our game loading. So I have a semi automated way of loading a random game. I won't know what it is until I turn it on. So Let's have a play. Drag. My audio input capture is turned off. You can see I've just lashed this part of the video together. Do we have some sound? I've just unmuted it. I'll tell you what we don't have here is a joystick. I'm so ill prepared for this part of the video. No, there is one over here. Oh, it's working. That was odd. That was a bit of a pause there. So this looks very much like Boulder Dash to me, um, which is a game I've not played for a long time. Oh, spiky things kill you. I'm not getting any sound coming through here. Let's see if we can do something about that. Oh yes, the audio capture is not rooted properly. I think I might have found it. That's it, we got sound, okay. Oh, <laughs> I wasn't paying attention there. Okay, so what do we think of this? Well, it's colorful. So you press fire to start, so that's fruit. Oh, my air is going down. I've got to be quite quick. Okay. Oh, and I can't stand under them. I haven't played... Oh, well, mm -hmm. I was about to say, I haven't played 
Boulder Dash for a long time and it wasn't a particular favourite of mine. Okay, we've got music now. It's okay. Oh, option for demo, that might be a good idea. Let's watch what we're supposed to do. So we eat the earth. Watching out for rocks. So do we have to eat all the earth? No, we're just trying to collect the artifacts, diamonds, whatever they are. But they can't fall on you either. Okay. Right, that's reminded us what the rules are. Don't have a code. So I want to get that one. Oh no, that's not an artifact, that's a spiky thing. I should have remembered that from a moment ago. Because that already happened, didn't it? That can't fall though, can it? That's useful. And is that an artifact? Yes. Oh, that isn't a oh, That looked like the sort of thing you pick up. How are you supposed to know what's good and what's bad in games like this when you just go straight in? I suppose you learn. Uh, so that was good. Um, is that like a bomb? Because I need to push that rock out of the way, don't I? Looking at my air. Yes, I had the right idea. Oh, lucky that was something I could eat. Ooh. Um, that's a spiky thing, isn't it? But that's something good. This is the point in the game where I normally do something very stupid. Yay! And there we go, we've done a level of... What's it called again? Drag. It's on my screen. So, you get the idea. Um, I mean, as far as this game is concerned, yeah, that's okay. I could get into this and... Uh, definitely have a bit of fun. I'm sure it gets fiendishly complicated in letter levels, as these sort of games normally do. Those are edibles, aren't they? Yeah. And they're going to fall. Is that going to fall over at the side? So, oh, that ah, wasn't paying attention. Game over. So, yeah, that's a good little game. Um, that might be one to be put on a list of uh, play agains, and I think that's what I'm attempting to do from this. Um, I'm going to sort through this massive amount of Atari 8 bit software, a lot of which I never got the chance to play because there's just too many of them and uh, could only afford a certain amount of games back in the day. Also, I was dealing with tapes at the time. 8 bit piracy, that wasn't really a thing for me. Um, I bought a lot of games back then, so um, yeah. It'll be good to see what's out there that I haven't seen just by randomly dipping in and uh, collect a, maybe a, a good list and a bad list from this. So yeah, that's what definitely to put on the good list, I think. Um, and we'll be doing this again soon. Um, maybe I'll perfect the process and make it a bit smoother next time. Okay, thanks for watching. This was the TJ Games channel. If you'd like to see any of this sort of gaming content or any of my hardware content, we've had a bit of both in this video, uh, please do subscribe to my channel. Um, any comments you have, really interested to hear. Um, looking to try and put content out regularly on this channel. Um, but um, yeah, if I'm busy, a lot of it might be these short gameplays. That's uh, hence the random selector is going to be my tool of choice. Okay, thanks for watching. Take care, everyone. Bye for now.